This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can design this badge style logo using Inkscape. And if you'd rather just buy a copy of this design that you can edit yourself with Inkscape, I'll put a link in the description to where you can download a copy of it for just $5. Otherwise, we'll get started here with Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can update Inkscape's appearance with this dark theme and these new icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So we'll go ahead and get our uh, document properties set up here. We'll go to File, Document Properties. Let me try that again. I'm going to set the display units to pixels. I'm going to turn off the visibility of the page border. And we can close out of that. And then up here, we want to go to View. Make sure we have Custom selected. And then we'll zoom in at 1 to 1. And then I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button right here. We're going to want Last Selected chosen from this dropdown. And then I'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button right there. And up here where it says Enable Snapping, we want that turned on. And where it says Snap to Cusp Nose, we're going to just make sure that's turned off. It should be turned off by default, but uh, with mine it was turned on. So I'm just, just make sure that's turned off for now. And once we've done that, the first we're going to do is grab the Stars and Polygons tool. And we're going to choose Polygon up here from this toolbar. We want six corners and then Rounded and Randomize both set to zero. And then I'm going to hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a polygon like that, where the corners are going vertically up and down. We don't want it, we don't want it sitting flat like that with the flat edges going up and down. We want it like this, where you see right here. And once we've done that, I'll just grab the Select tool. And I want to get rid of the black color and then instead give it a black outline. So to do that, I'm going to click this little X button down here. And that's going to remove the fill color. And what I'll do is I'll hold Shift and click on this uh, black shade right here, which is going to give this an outline color, otherwise known as a stroke. And, uh, and up here from the Stroke Style menu, I'm going to change this to, I'm going to change this to pixels. I'm going to set the, the width of this to maybe something like 10. That's pretty good. And up here where it says join, we want to use a miter join and a, um, a square cap just so we have those nice sharp corners there at each edge. And once we've done that, up here where it says uh, when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion, make sure that's turned off. That's going to make sure that no matter how big or small we make the object, the stroke thickness remains the same, which we want. So uh, once we've done that, I'm going to convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And then I'll duplicate that object by hitting Control D, or you could just right click it and go to duplicate. And then I'm going to hold Control and Shift and grab one of these arrows and just scale this down about that much. And then I'm going to change the thickness of this to be a little smaller. I'll go with something like maybe uh, like seven. That looks pretty good. Scale it up a little bit like that to fit in there better. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little chunk out of each corner of this inner. Uh, polygon right here just to give it that style, that sort of design. So I'm going to grab the uh, Circles and Ellipses tool and I'm going to hold Control and Shift and create a little circle like that. And I'm going to make that red. I'm going to hold Shift, click on the X to get rid of the fill color and I'm going to bring the opacity of this down about in half. And we want to convert that to a path as well. So we'll go to Path, Object to Path. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the Select tool and then I'll come back up here to where, it's, where the uh, Enable Snapping menu is. I'm going to turn on Snap to Cusp Nodes, and I'm going to turn on um, Snap and Items Rotation Center. And once we've done that, I'm going to grab the object right around where the center is, and I'm going to snap the center onto the corner of that polygon right there. And let me zoom in on it so you can see it better. I'm just going to hold Control and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in so you can see it better. I'm going to take this object, hit Control D to duplicate that, and I'm going to snap a copy of that to that corner right there. And again, Control D to duplicate it. Put this right there. And let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hold Shift and click on these other two so we have all three selected and I'll duplicate them by hitting Control D. And I'm going to flip them vertically with this button. Flip selected objects vertically. And I'll put these ones down here, just like that. And once we've done that, I'm going to hold Shift and click on the other three red circles so we have them all selected. And go to Path, Union, and then I'm going, to, and I'm going to hold Shift and click on the inner polygon and go to Path Difference. And that's going to create like a little bit of a, a circle indentation around each corner of the polygon there. And I'm going to put a little circle inside of there just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of added style. So I'll go back to the Circles and Ellipses tool. I'm going to hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a little circle like that. I'll bring the opacity all the way up. 
I'm going to make this uh, black and I'll just go to path object to path to convert that to a path as well. I'm going to turn off enable snapping for now because that's going to otherwise get in our way. And I'll go back to the select tool. I'm just going to put this up here like that. And let me zoom in on this and shrink it down a little bit like that. And once I've done that, I want to make sure it's centered up in there vertically. So I'm going to hold shift and click on the polygon and just where it says align center on vertical axis, just like that. Click off of it to deselect everything. And I'm going to make a duplicate of this copy and then hold control and click and drag it down here. So it locks onto the vertical axis like that. I'll hit control D to duplicate that again. I'll put another copy up here. Right about there. I'll hit control D to duplicate that. Hold control, click and drag this one down here so it locks onto the vertical axis like that. And then I'll just click and drag over both of those and create another copy, control D, and then hold control and just bring these across here like that. So we have those objects all there as such. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna put some text in here. But um, in order to do that, I want to increase the height of this object. So I'm going to click and drag over all of this, everything we see here, click and drag over all of it. And then I'm going to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And I'm going to click and drag over this top half of nodes right here. And then I'm going to hold Control and just click one of these nodes and just bring that up, maybe about that far, so it's a bit elongated. Go back to the Select tool, click off of that to deselect everything. And I'm going to put some text in here, as I mentioned earlier. I'll grab the, uh, the text tool, click on the canvas, and I'm just going to turn on the caps lock and write logo design. You could write whatever you'd like, obviously. Uh, for the text, I'm going to, for the font, I mean, I'm going to click on the text editor up here. Let me go grab that. There we go. The text editor, I'm going to look for Lead Gothic. You may have to download and install this font. Um, Lead Gothic, it's a free font. Go ahead and click apply. Or any font really you'd like, you can use. And once I've done that, let me grab the select tool and hold control and shift and scale that up a little bit. Put that in the center like that. I want to put some spacing between these letters. So I'll go back to the text tool, click on the actual text. And right here where it says spacing between letters, I'm going to change that to like something like five. See how that looks. Maybe I'll try 10 instead. That's pretty good. Go back to the select tool and then I'll just hold shift and click on this polygon right there and make sure it's centered on the vertical axis. Now we could center it on the horizontal axis as well, but I wanna actually, I don't want this one centered in the middle here. I wanna put this text down here like that. And I'm holding, when I'm clicking and dragging like this, I'm holding control to lock it onto the vertical axis so it doesn't shift over left and right. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna place this text right about here so I could put some, icon, uh, put like an icon up here along with some other text and some circle text down at the bottom click off of that to deselect everything. What I want to do now is get rid of this part of the polygon where these where this uh, get rid of these lines where the text is. So to do that, I'm going to grab this, the uh, squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle going over the text. And you may want to make that a different color and bring the opacity down so you can see where it's located relative to the text. And once we've done that, I'll grab the select tool, move this off to the side, then hold shift and click on the text. And with them both selected, just center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. Click off of that to deselect everything. And then I'm going to take this object right here, this uh, this red rectangle. I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. And then I'll hold Shift and click on this inner um, polygon right there. And I'll go to Path, Cut Path. And then I'll hold Shift and click on the top portion of this polygon to deselect it. And then while still holding shift, I'll click on the bottom portion to deselect that as well. And all that will be left selected are these two areas right here where it's overlapping with the text. And then we can just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And I'm going to do the same thing with this outside polygon as well. So let me click on the red object, hold shift, click on the large polygon going around the outside and go to path, cut path. Hold shift, click on the top portion to deselect it. Hold shift, click on the bottom portion to deselect it. And then press delete on the keyboard. And we have successfully gotten rid of that part of the polygon where the object was. So the next step would be to add a little bit of lines sticking out this way. So it looks like the text belongs in there. Because as it looks now, it kind of looks uh, like it doesn't really fit right. So to do that, 
I'm going to click on this outside shape up here, the thicker line. I'm going to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and I'm going to click and drag over those bottom two nodes, and then just hold Control and click and drag them up like that. And then I'm going to grab the uh, the Bezier pen. Let's uh, press Escape on the keyboard to deselect everything. Let me go back to the Bezier pen. We want to make sure we have nothing selected. I'm going to go back up here to where it says Enable Snapping. I want to turn that back on. And I want to snap to this corner right here of the, of the thinner line. Click and hold control and bring this line out to about here and then click and then just press enter to create that line and I want to grab the select tool I want to duplicate that by hitting control D and I want to put this line over here on this side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine them all together now and to do that I'm going to hold shift click on the other one so we have both of those new lines selected and then I'll hold shift and click on this other line so we have all three of these selected and I'm going to go to the edit paths by nodes tool and I'm going to click and drag over this node right here where those two objects are connecting. And I'm going to click this button up here that says Join Selected Nodes. And that's going to make that all one object. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Click and drag over that. Join Selected Nodes. And that's going to make that all one object, although it took the properties of the smaller line. So I'm going to change the thickness of that back. So I'm going to go to the Select tool, go back to the Stroke Style. I think the width was, let me check this one. Seven, yeah, I used seven for that one, so I'll have to make this one seven as well. Oops, not 73, seven. Okay, and as you can see, that's given us the, de the, uh, the desire effect. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click and drag over these bottom objects and just group them together with the group key up here, or you just press Control G on the keyboard. And I'm gonna click and drag over these topped objects up here and group them as well. And then I want to duplicate this by hitting Control D. And then I want to flip this vertically. And then I want to come down here and bring this down here like that. And then we can take this and just press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And I'm just going to hold Control and just bring this up here about that far. And then we can ungroup that with the uh, ungroup button. And I want to make this smaller in height like the previous object was. So I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool click and drag over these bottom portion of nodes right there and then just hold control and click and drag one of them up maybe about that far like just like that we'll go back to the select tool and we can click off of that to deselect everything and what I want to do now is I just want to make sure that the text is positioned it's spaced out evenly between the two objects here so I'm going to click on this object hold shift click on the text while still holding shift click on the next object and over here where it says distribute, click the button that says make vertical gaps between objects equal. And that's going to space, make sure everything's spaced out evenly, just like that. And then we can click off of that to deselect everything. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add like a little bit of um, a design right here. And then I'll add like uh, some subtext like established 2003. Uh, what I'll do next is I'm just going to create like a little star, I guess. I'll click on the uh, stars. Uh, icon. I'll change that to 5. Make the spoke ratio 0 0.375. I'm just creating a regular star here. Rounded and randomized set to 0 and then hold control and shift and click and drag up. Make sure you move your mouse straight up vertically in order for the star to be sitting upright like that. If you're moving it to like the left or the right it's going to shift it around. Move the cursor straight up like that to create a nice star. And I'll go back to the select tool. I'll make this black, bring the opacity up, hold control and shift and scale it down. Put this right about there. Uh, let me turn off snapping for now. That's going to be an annoyance. Then I'll hold shift and click on this object and just make sure it's centered on the vertical axis. And I'm just going to take this text and duplicate that. And I'm just going to. Uh, and you know what? I'll duplicate it again by hitting Control D. Hold Control to move it off to the right so we have two different copies of it. And I'll grab the text tool and I'm just going to use this to write um, established oops, and 2003 because that's when Inkscape was released as far as I understand. And I'll hold sh Shift and click on both of those and just bring this over here. Hold Control and Shift and scale it down so we have our nice little subtext over here. I'm just going to move that in a little closer. I'll move this in a little closer. 
maybe move that out a little bit. And that's pretty good right there. And one final step would be to add some text going around the inside here in a circular motion. So I'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool and I'm going to hold control and shift and click and drag to create a big circle like that. And I'm going to make that a light shade of gray. Grab this select tool, put this over the uh, design right about here. And I'm going to layer this. I'm going to send this to the bottom by clicking the button that says lower selection to the bottom. Then I'll hold shift and click on any any really any part of the logos polygon and just click on the uh, center on vertical axis and click off at the deselect and I'm just going to hold control and just move this circle up maybe right about here and I'm going to hold control and just shrink that down a little bit what we're paying attention to is the curvature of the bottom of this circle right here because that's where the text is going to sit the text is going to follow the curvature of the edge of this circle so I just want to make sure I have that sized and positioned at a way that I think looks good. I think maybe right about there is pretty good. So what I'll do now is I'll grab the text tool and I'll just write the subtext down here with Inkscape. You can type whatever you'd like, obviously. Um, go back to the select tool and I'm actually gonna change this font to something heavy like Montserrat. Montserrat uh, heavy black apply. Close out of that. And I'm just going to hold control and scale that down a little bit. And once we have that text set, I'm going to hold shift and click on the circle. So we have both the text and the circle selected and go to text, put on path. And that's going to wrap the text around the circle like that. But I want it going around the inside of the circle, not the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off of that to deselect everything. Click on just the circle and then flip that horizontally. And that's going to change it around so that the text is inside the circle. But now I need to rotate it around a little bit. So I'm going to click on the circle again to get the rotation handles. And we're going to rotate the circle. We're not going to rotate the text, just the circle itself. That's pretty good right there. Uh, I want to put some spacing between those letters. So let me grab the text tool. Click on the text so we get the little cursor blinking somewhere between those letters. And I'm going to change the spacing to maybe something like 10. See how that looks? That's a little too much. Maybe 7. And maybe I'll bring the size down a little bit as well. I'll make that to like something like 20. That's pretty good. I'll go back to the select tool, click on the circle again so we can rotate that around some more. Click on it a second time to get the rotation handles. And you just take the rotate handle and rotate it around like that. And if you want to ensure that it's uh, rotated properly where one side isn't sticking up higher than the other, you could bring your cursor up here to where these, where like this little ruler is, like this, this little, um, increments of measurement and just click and drag down to create a horizontal guide and place that right about where the text is. And if you zoom in and you can see where the tip of the W touches the tip of the E, just rotate that around a little bit just to make sure it's, and that's, that's how you can ensure that it's even like that. Now we can click off of that to deselect, double click on the line right here and just press delete to get rid of that. And once we've done that, I could take this text, click on that and go to path object to path just to finalize it. Make sure you have that text finalized just how you like it uh, before you do that because after you do that you won't be able to, to, to write something else there. You'll have to recreate it all over again. But once we've done that, once we convert it to a path, we could take this circle and get rid of it. Press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100% and we're pretty much done except for uh, one final thing we want to do. If you click and drag over this entire thing and you scale it down, you're going to notice the lines change thickness as well. There's two different ways we can fix this. We could turn on this button that says when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. We could turn that on and that'll make sure that the, uh, the stroke thickness scales in proportion with um, however you know small or large we make the design. Or what we can do is click on the line right here. Let me ungroup that. Click off it to deselect. Click on the line so we just have the stroke selected and convert that to a path by going to path, stroke to path. And we can do the same thing over here. Path, stroke to path. Same thing with the bottom side now. Convert that to a path as well, each of those lines. And now what you can do is click and drag over it and make that red, or orange, or blue, or you could do whatever you'd like now. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. That's how you can create uh, this badge style of logo using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.